starts right now. And tonight we start with a scrapyard that could soon lose its license to recycle. Yeah, neighbors worry that after multiple fires here, this is polluting their neighborhood. The business has had multiple code violations. So many, the city of San Antonio has given Monterey iron and metal until next week to appeal or it will remove its license. Night team's Avery Everett shows us what the company is doing now to save its business. It's a terrible threat to a company that's existed for 100 years. With its license to recycle on the line, Monterey Iron and Metal is making changes. We've notified the city of that. The scrapyard on the southwest side has just about a week left to appeal before the city revokes its license to recycle. And San Antonio's Development Services Department confirmed a case at that Monterey had multiple code violations that led up to this decision. We feel like we have come to completion of um, our efforts to come into full compliance. Some of these issues were reported as fencing, not fully enclosing the recycling yard, no road and barrier, salvage material being too close to the fencing, and weeds being too high. We are trying to look the way that um, that they would like for us to. Parts of the old chain link fence for Monterey are now sitting idle as they have now installed a new metal fence in the back of the recycling yard. We disagreed with city um, on some of the requirements and you know, that's just not not a not a battle to fight. Just past this here, the flat. We got to look at the grounds of Monterey Iron for the first time to see its operation and progress that it's made. It'll go up this incline conveyor, slide down that chute, and that's where it goes into the shredder. When we visited, his crews were cleaning up. We saw how the scrap metal was being sorted. The material, like I said earlier, goes up here. This is our finished product on the ferrous side. Ferrous meaning magnetic. At a first glance. This yard was overwhelming. I feel like when you look across this yard to someone who isn't here every day, it looks messy, but you say it's all organized. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, and I can see where an outsider would see that. With the clock ticking, Monterey hopes compliance is enough. I would hope that 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 in so doing and and by inviting them out here to find us compliant would hopefully stop the process of revocation. Because even if this operation looks to be in full swing, its license is still in limbo. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Fog is developing outside right now. Expect that for the morning commute, then a mainly gray day tomorrow. And actually gray is going to be the common color in the sky all the way through Saturday. Warm tomorrow, 55 in the morning, 73 in the afternoon. And notice those slight rain chances picking up tomorrow evening, 9 at 9 p.m., 20%, but 40% later tomorrow night and up to 60% on Friday. That's when our rain chances peak and then tapering off as we get into Saturday morning. I'll be back with the latest future cast. Talk about how much rain is going to fall and where it's not going to be equal opportunity and a special weather anniversary today. See you in a bit. I remember it well. Thank you, Adam. Well, a big decision and a big deadline tomorrow for some San Antonio ISD families. Students at the 15 SAISD schools that are set to close can accept their newly designated school or choose a campus of their choice, but they have to make the decision by tomorrow. As of tonight, 971 impacted families still hadn't made a decision. Rats, roaches, and poor and unsafe living conditions. A group of San Antonians want the city to do something about all this. Those at City Hall demanding city leaders hold landlords responsible to ensure housing conditions meet minimum code standards. Some of the specific issues brought up animal infestations, no hot water, tenants who've lived through these conditions partnered with the Texas Organizing Project or TOPS to ask city council members to do more for their constituents. We want to be able to lay down, you know, without having to worry about a rodent coming through or, you know, put your plate on the table without being attacked by the roaches. The tenants are the ones who understand what the problems are with the policy and so our request would be that members are the ones who are participating to actually craft a policy that's going to work. It's not a way to live. Sophia Lopez with Top says currently the city has the proactive apartment inspection program. She believes that's a step in the right direction, but it's simply not enough right now. 
Failing to use body-worn cameras and admitting to having sex while on duty. Those are just a few of the issues that led to a San Antonio police officer's suspension. We're talking about Officer Javier Galvan. He's suspended through April 7th. The 76-day suspension, the result of a last chance agreement that he signed in November. He was cited for multiple rules violations, including attentiveness to duties and responsibility to serve the public. City records show Galvan told an intern he had sex with the victim of a domestic violence call to which he responded. He's also accused of sleeping on the job, failing to respond to calls, and failing to turn on his body-worn camera on 60 different calls for service during a 30-day period. Case had called. Officer Galvan's union attorney for comment we have not heard back yet. You can read additional details on his suspension right now on KSAT.com. What started as a celebration turned into chaos and tragedy over in Kansas City. One person is dead tonight. Several more hit by gunfire that rang out at the end of the Chiefs of the Chiefs Super Bowl parade. Parade goers ran for their lives after those shots were fired near Union Station in downtown Kansas City. Right now, at least 21 people were shot, including eight children. Kansas City police estimate that a million people were there. 800 law enforcement officers were also there at the parade trying to keep people safe. And the Kansas City police chief is frustrated that despite all of the officers being there, the shooting still happened. I'm angry at what happened today. The people who came to this celebration should expect a safe environment. Now, police did find one weapon. All Chiefs players, coaches, and staff members were accounted for. They had already boarded buses back to Arrowhead Stadium when that shooting happened. And as that played out in Kansas City, today marks the sixth year since the mass, mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Schools in the area honored the 17 people who lost their lives at that school. Student-led protests following the shooting resulted in multiple bipartisan gun regulations. The gunman who carried out the Parkland massacre serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. And right now we know the shooting at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Houston still fresh. Unfortunately, shootings at places of worship, these things have happened before. Coming up a little later on in the night beat, we're going to take you inside local churches for a look at how they're protecting people. So you probably saw many people with ashes on their foreheads today. It's Ash Wednesday, which is the first day of Lent. Each year, Christians go to Mass to be blessed with ashes and the sign of a cross on their foreheads. Lent is also a season where people make personal sacrifices to honor the sacrifices that Jesus made. We spoke with people at the San Fernando Cathedral about the religious holiday and what it means to them. It helps cleanse the soul, the sacrifices that we make and the sacrifices that we give from the daily rest for our Lord and Savior. It means a lot to a lot of every, everybody. So just in case you're wondering, those ashes that you see there, they're made from palm branches that were blessed from the previous year's Palm Sunday. And today also Valentine's Day, I hope you remembered. And this is a great Valentine's Day story. A young mother's battle with a rare illness turned to a heartwarming tale of love and of sacrifice. Natalie Cerna was diagnosed with a rare blood disease. She spent a month in the hospital undergoing, undergoing blood transfusions and medications that resulted in her kidneys failing. Cerna's fiance, Royal Johnson, bravely stepped up to get tested as a donor. Now, he was not a match, but the pair went through the kidney exchange program at the Methodist Transplant Hospital designed to match patients with compatible donors. You do whatever it, you know, it takes for you to protect your family. So I was like, this is the easiest decision of my life, you know, especially seeing her every night, having to hook herself up to dialysis and, you know, the emotional uh, trauma that she was going through. So through the program, Johnson successfully donated his kidney to another recipient in Cerna's honor, enabling her to receive a compatible transplant. Now, two years later, the couple sharing their story to give hope to other patients battling a daunting diagnosis. And by the way, they're also getting ready for their wedding. Congratulations to them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, here's an update from Austin. Police are saying that that deadly car crash into an Austin emergency room does not appear to be intentional. Austin police say that 57 year old Michael Holloway died after driving his vehicle right into the St. David's North Austin Medical Center last night. Five others were hurt, including two kids. 
Here's the weird thing, though. Investigators say the crash didn't interfere with their patient care. The ER is actually in pretty good condition because of an aquarium there. It, apparently, it absorbed much of the crash. Ash Wednesday is one of the more popular days to go to church. Tonight on the Nightbeat, we talk to local religious leaders about the changes they're making following the latest church shooting. Mass shootings at places of worship, churches, synagogues, temples. The latest one happened just three hours from us in Houston this weekend. The night team's Patty Santos tells us that that incident is forcing religious leaders to upgrade security. This has been our church um, for a long time. Karina and Noel Gonzalez walked out of Ash Wednesday Mass at San Fernando Cathedral feeling at peace. It should not be a place where you are afraid and it should be a place where you, f you feel welcomed. An armed security officer stood watch as hundreds entered the building throughout the day. One pastor says having armed off-duty officers undercover security and cameras has become a costly norm at many places of worship. Churches and schools are uh, soft targets, and, uh, and so the church have to be Pastor Herman Price Jr. serves as pastor for St. John Baptist Church. He says security is a big concern for churches of all sizes, but many of them can't afford it. Oh, Sunday's church shooting in Houston is forcing him to reevaluate his congregation's current plan. It made me rethink what we're doing and, and, and to think about maybe the need to make that investment. We reached out to other churches. First Baptist Church of San Antonio said, we continually monitor and assess our processes and protocols. The San Antonio Archdiocese said security measures at our parishes and facilities are regularly evaluated and reviewed. You specialize in safety of places like churches. Ryan Searles works in safety and security design. He says more religious leaders are thinking about the worst case scenarios. 100% um, with houses of worship, you are thinking security across all different religions because of the amount of attacks you have on them and violent acts in them. For those that can't afford to update their building, Searles says they should consider having armed and trained parishioners. Christ urges leaders to do what they can. Use wisdom as well. Patty Santos. And, uh, do, do the best we could. He said 12 Trust news. God to, to do the rest for us. Oh. Well, I think of attacks on churches, I think of Sutherland Springs and just what happened there. A lot to learn from these incidents. Well, another business on the St. Mary's Strip is closing its doors. This time it's one of the newest spots. We're talking about a place called Worst Behavior, W-U-R-S-T Behavior. It comes about five months since the North St. Mary's Strip construction project wrapped up. The Asian Comfort Food and Beer Garden has only been open for about a year. They took to social media this week announcing that this will be their last week open. One of their owners, Sean Wen, tells us in part, quote, we ultimately had to close because it really just ended up being a top line revenue issue and being unable to get enough butts in seats. As for why that was the case, I think it was a mix of a couple different factors, to be honest, which makes it hard to pinpoint, end quote. Worst behavior will have everything on their menu discounted until their final day this Sunday. It's what a lot of businesses had feared, and, for, and hopefully that won't happen to more of them. Now here's a live look outside right now. Adam, you were talking about the fog that we're going to be dealing with uh, tomorrow. You already see some, some gray there in our sky, but let's go all the way back to three years ago and where we were. This is when it was fun three years ago. Mm -hmm. The 12 hours, it was a good time. This is what it looked like. This, yeah, we just thought, yeah, just a little bit of snow. Then it's going to get cold, you know, not a big deal. Well, this is what it was three years ago tonight. The snow and cold began. It started with this very powdery and fluffy snow that fell across South Central Texas, 3.7 inches officially at the airport. That would be after midnight tonight into tomorrow morning. It was measured. Nine degrees is what we woke up to three years ago tomorrow morning, nine degrees. And when you think about this, this is remember, this is all fun. You look at the videos from the night and everybody's enjoying it, having a good time. Oh, this is so unique and fun. Then, of course, the reality set in when the power grid failed and consequently water started to get knocked offline as well in places from the prolonged cold. Tonight, we're just focusing on the fun aspect of it. We can get into the other details 
in the days ahead as it was a prolonged event. Valentine's Day into the day after, and we picked up six inches in Hondo, again, three years ago. San Antonio International 3.7, Pipe Creek 5 inches, Leon Valley 6 inches, Bulverde 5.8. Very memorable night. And again, that's when it was all fun and games until everything changed. We can get into more of those statistics over the next couple of days. Let's talk about our morning temperature trend. A light freeze Sunday morning. We're going to feel the chill. Nothing like what we had three years ago, but a brief light freeze Sunday morning right at 32. By the way, our average last freeze in San Antonio is February 24th into the Hill Country. It's March, even as late as late March in parts of the Hill Country. But I do want to point out we have had a late freeze as late as early April here in town. That's just the, the rare exception, but it has happened. Speaking of freeze, off to the north. 20s to near 30, really not that cold for this time of year in the Dakotas, Minnesota, Chicago, even above freezing right now. But some of that cooler air, this is not Arctic air, this cooler polar air will push southward. And by the weekend, it's going to move into town and settle into place briefly just for the weekend. And then temperatures rebound quickly as we get into next week. But notice our afternoon temperature trend. 73 tomorrow afternoon, the warmest we get on Sunday, 50 degrees. So think of Sunday as most of the day in the 40s, and then by Sunday, we warm up to 58. But notice next week, almost spring-like, back in the 70s, just like that. Just as quickly as the temperature can drop, it'll warm back up. Big plume of moisture coming in from the Pacific, some energy associated with it, and a cold front that'll be moving through Friday night, helping to kickstart some showers. And most of this is going to be light. Don't anticipate a whole lot, but notice by tomorrow night, the rain starts to overspread our area. You see some yellows in here. That may be a little aggressive and overdone, but a few moderate showers. Otherwise, intermittent light rain with a little bit of drizzle in between. You know, just coming and going throughout the day on Friday and even lingering into Friday night. But as I mentioned and want to stress, mainly light in nature. So around San Antonio, a quarter to half an inch. You go into the hill country, even lesser amounts where we need the rain the most, uh, maybe up to a tenth to two tenths of an inch. However, farther south of town, Catula to Laredo, McAllen, Brownsville, Corpus Christi, one to two inches of rain. This is because that's where most of the rain is going to be falling for a prolonged period of time. It's moving in from the south and it's going to sit over deep south Texas for a bit longer. Here's another recap of those rain chances tomorrow. 20% during the afternoon, not a big deal. Tomorrow night, well after sunset, 40%, then Friday, 60% coverage, and even Friday night, still some scattered activity. Saturday morning, we could have a few showers early, but I think the weekend is generally going to be dry. Uh, Saturday, most of the day, just mainly cloudy, windy, and cold. We talked about that Sunday. We'll have a lot of sunshine, but the light freeze in the morning will be noticeable and we'll only make it up to 58 by the afternoon. But hey, into next week, at least it's not a prolonged freeze. Now we're back into the 70s before you know it. All right. Thank you. All right. So you're hoping maybe the Spurs have a little winning streak going into the All-Star break. Wasn't to be in Big D. It wasn't, and that was the hope. Ideally, you go in with confidence, but it was a tale of two halves tonight in Dallas. A hot start for the Spurs quickly turned cold with a flat second half effort. Highlights from the loss coming up. Plus, we hear from Mike Zimmer for the first time since he was named the Dallas Cowboys' new defensive coordinator, all coming up right after the break. Rivalry night in the Lone Star State. The San Antonio Spurs are in Dallas hoping to bring back-to-back -back wins into the All-Star break. We all know by now Spurs rookie Victor Wambanyama is coming off of a historic triple-double with blocks and off to another hot start. The French big man nails a pair of triples to give the Spurs an early lead. The way he pulls up from the logo so effortlessly, it never gets old. San Antonio controlled the first quarter, but Dallas would go into halftime up by five. Second half, it was almost like the Spurs stayed in the locker room maybe. Kyrie Irving drives a lane and floats one in. That ignites the Mavericks' command of the game. Here's Luka Doncic. He hits the step-back jumper. Doncic dropped 27 points, nine rebounds. 
playing through injuries. And entering the fourth quarter, the Spurs' possibility for a comeback looks bleak as Irving finds his spot in the corner pocket for three of his 34 points on the evening. And the Spurs fall 116 to 93, a damper. After Monday's big win over Toronto, Irving led the floor with 34 points. Wemby had 26 points, nine rebounds, and three blocks. And Coach Pop didn't think it was fair to compare Wemby's first half to his second half effort. Well, you know, it's hard. You, you know, you're uh, you're sort of treating him like I used to treat David. So David, you got to come on. He had 26 points. He had nine rebounds and three blocks. And you're <laughs> Come on. In 27 minutes. <laughs> Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Mike Zimmer's three decade long NFL coaching career will pick back up again as he takes on the role of defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys. It's been three years since Zimmer's last NFL gig where he was the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings from 2014 to 2021. His time away from the league included working as an analyst and consultant for Deion Sanders at Jackson State and Colorado. Zimmer took time away from the game to spend time with his family after losing his son unexpectedly in 2022. Here's the 67 year old this afternoon at the star reflecting on his time away from coaching. I did a lot of reflection on um, what my time in Minnesota, you know, the eight years, the things that I felt like we did good, the things um, that I felt like I didn't do as good, trying to figure out, you know, how I can be a better coach in the future. Um, obviously, there was all, always some tape watching and, and uh, things like that. Marvin and I, Marvin Lewis and I was a great friend. Um, you know, we did a podcast, and then afterwards we'd sit on there and um, we'd watch tape together and talk about players and talk about schemes and things like that. But a lot of it was a lot of it was reflection on. And, um, you know, what I did well and what I didn't do well. Studying the game with Coach Prime and former NFL head coach Marvin Lewis seems like good company. Andre Johnson is headed into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the first Houston Texan to even wear the gold jacket. Johnson today spoke with the media for the first time since being selected last week, and he recounted the day he got the word of his induction come August. His agent told him he wanted to put him in his will to lure him to his house for the surprise. I can't see who's actually standing at the door. I could tell there's somebody standing there and I see a gold, I could see him in a gold jacket, but I can't see his face. So I, right then and there, I was like, I know this is not, <laughs> not about to happen. Like, so um, I go, I open the door and I mean, you guys saw it. I mean, that's, you know, it was Chris and I was just like, wow, like this is really happening. So awesome. All right, after the break, we'll show you bull riding from the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Welcome back. Let's head out to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo for bull riding on this Wednesday, where the bulls were the winners, except for Jake Gardner, a Canadian cowboy riding Twizzler with one Z. Gardner with the solo eight second ride of the evening and what a ride it was. Gardner earned a score of 83 points. Here's another look. Gardner was in full control and even nearly landed on his feet. I know I'm new to the sport. I don't know much about it, but the unsuccessful rate is incredible. Only one winner tonight. Yeah, and it was him. What you're saying is basically he, he almost nailed the dismount. He I know I'm mixing up my sports analogies here, but. Gymnastics and bull riding. Exactly. Those are the, the, the only sports that matter tonight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the Thanks, only sport Mary. that gives me major anxiety. Same. Because I'm, I'm like, please don't get hurt. All right. Same. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Good case at Canex shout out on this Valentine's Day. These are uh, wi wintering Texans. Love is love and it's all around. It's, it's in the air, you'd say. <laughs> <laughs>